Amen. I congratulate you for being present and hearing me in this program. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, turn your Bible to Psalm 62, verse 11. Ah, 62. I read Psalm 62. Please open your Bible. Psalm chapter 62, verse 11. God has spoken one. Why have I had thee that power belongeth unto God? In Second Chronicles chapter 25, Second Chronicles 25, and from verse 8, Second Chronicles 25, and from verse 8, and I read, 55 from verse 8. But if thou will go to it, be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. For God hath power to help and to cast down. And I'm Isaiah said to the man of God, but what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. In Psalm chapter 2, Psalm chapter 2, I read, or let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, rather. 1 Samuel. Forgive me for God's own. And immediately, 
when Jesus was passing in his spirit, that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Whether it be easier to say to the speak of the person, I may be forgiven thee, but to say, Arise and take thy bed and walk. That ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. He says unto the speak of the person, I saw unto thee, arise and take up thy bed, and go to thy, thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose, took up his bed, took up the bed, and went forth before them all. In so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw you on this, on this chapter and verse I'm bringing to you the team. God has power to do this all that. We are looking at part one. God has power to do this all I want you to bear attention. Praise the Lord. In this program, today, to further, no one should limit God or his ability to do all things anymore. As we listen in this message, you should understand. There is nothing God cannot do. Praise the Lord. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. I go straight away to that point. Matthew chapter 19, and verse 26. And it reads, said, no. Verse 26. For Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I don't know the problem that brought you in with God. With God, all things are possible. No matter what you are going through, it will never survive this program. Do you believe it? He is all powerful. And the traffic thing. God why is I happy? A power belongeth unto God. Power belongeth unto God. Am I showing to our God? He is the creator of all things. And He is the creator by His power. And what He cannot do, does not do. He has power to build. He has power to do and undo. And in this program, I'm assuring you, you will return home with testimony. If you believe it, say amen. He is all power. He is the creator of all things, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities of power, he is the creator. If you look at the Bible in Colossians chapter 1, Colossians, I read chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, and from verse 3, it reads chapter 1, and from verse 3, Colossians chapter 1, from verse 3, for so by him were all things created, that I have, and that I have. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominion or principalities or power, all things were created by Him. And by Him, and for Him, look at verse 17. And He is before all things. And by Him, all things consist. Everything is existing by Him, by His power. Everything that is created. And all human beings, 
everything that has life, everything that exists, was created by God. And the Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 1, I read verse 1, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, and it reads, In the beginning, the flow, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the middle of all things. And I want to take note. Being the creator, he has power to receive. He has power to give and to make right. And in fact, I want to let you know. He is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. In fact, if you look at Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22, rather, when you say, Lord, Revelation chapter 22, verse 13, look at the Bible, Revelation 22, and verse 13. Can you see? Revelation 22, reading verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So, so, to take note of this, no matter who is behind your problem, the devil, the demon, the human agent, or the devil, do not be happy. Are you here with me? That person was created by who? That person is subject to who? Am I sure of you? Whatever be the problem, whoever behind it, today they will die. The problem will never follow you out. Everything that the damage you have put on the creator, the spirit behind that affliction or problem or poverty, that spirit must die. The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 45, Isaiah chapter 45, and I read from verse 23, Isaiah 45, verse 23, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow. Every tongue that's well, the word, that spirit behind him was bad. That wicked personality that is swelling the fire, that is increasing the pressure. In this program, it was not so bad. No matter how terrible or difficult that enemy may be, or that problem, Maybe there is nothing to worry about. Or who may have attended to you? Attended to your problem. Or your problem. Take a look at this point. It could be the doctor. It could be that expert. The one step of them. Attending to that problem. It could be a weak person. It could be a prophet and those in a prayer and I want everything to show you to the you and the problem persisted. In this program it must not survive. You may be asking why there are a specialist in this world. Are you hearing me? If you go to the specialist, you will not be running up and down to the house to how to deliver and to keep that ability to go first and then and to pay and be free. And be free. In this issue, it is the difference of your, the first God has given up for that purpose. And I can say to you that this means a pastor here and a special. Somehow, do you believe it? Let me talk. No matter where you 
carry that problem to. I want to make you know that problem can no more. Because the God that we serve is the true God. He has called us into this ministry. He has given us the grace. And that grace is to do that which God has given us to do. And see that our God is God that has power to do this or that. I'm assuring you, I am in the office and as representative of God to do this or that. He sees you today, you will deliver. You will heal. You will be blessed. No matter the evil they have done, remedy is coming your way. Every broken bone, every broken marriage, everything that has gone upside down in this program, the Lord will revive it. The Lord will restore it. The Lord will heal you. Get ready. I'm assuring you, in this program, the problem will not survive. Do you know that those that get no testimony today can come to many places and yet no cure for just one person? Praise the Lord. You have your testimony. And I'm assuring you, in this program, you will be the next testifier. Do you believe it? So, I do not want to know how many years that sickness, that problem, that enemy is rising you. But today is the end of it. God, whom I serve, has power to do this all. That is unimaginable problem in your life. Those thoughts are giving you 50 people. I tell you no chance. I say you cannot marry again. You cannot have children again. You cannot prosper, make prosper, no progress in life. And many of them have told you that, look, forget about this one. In this program, look at it for the last time. It's going. I say that problem is wrong. It's going. It must not survive. As long as you have stepped into this program today, you can do good with them. Do you believe me? As long as you are here today, tomorrow, I will hear your testimony. In Genesis 22, verse 16, Genesis chapter 22, I read verse 16, look at the Bible. Genesis 22, and verse 16, and it reads, verse 16, and said, I said, have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, I have not within thy son, thy only son. Said the Lord, is there not something you did that will make for this miracle today? You may not understand what you have done. Somebody to be under this kind of song. Please answer me. Somebody being in this song from morning to this hour. And you have been waiting to this hour with expectation. Do you think it's easy for somebody to leave everything behind and travel all the way and come and sat in a place like this? Because you have done this thing. God oaths is standing for you. He said, by myself have I sworn that in blessing I will do all. He see you. In this program, God will bless you. You will move higher from glory to glory. At that level you think you are now, you are crossing over. If you believe he say amen. He see that your condition. That many people are mocking you. Some people look at you and call you by that problem. Today that yoke will break. Are you asking me why? Because you have come. Because you believe. 
Because I decided that, you know, to identify with the choosing ones. He see you. You are going home with testimony. The sister was directed by her sister from Lagos. I said, take your son to choose him. He will receive remedy. Now, listen to me. When she came, did she have remedy? Another one was directed to bring your twins to, to, to choose him today. You have remedy. When she came, did you have a remedy? The two sons, not one, because the blessings of God make it rich. And others, not one. Two sons, mouth were loose, tongue were loose, their ear were loose, and they began to do what? Speak and hear. I want to let you know, is it not enough to tell you that you are coming here today will never be in vain? Amen. If you believe it, say amen. amen. The assurance I'm giving to you, whether you believe me or not, my faith is greater than your doubt. Whatever I shall speak in this program, will you hold in your life? Do you hear me? Now listen to me. God has decided to bless you. And he's telling you today, whichever way, this or that, that he has power to take care of that matter. Are you hearing me? Whether the problem is this or that, whether that problem appears to be impossible, whether your system has been cut off, whether there is no more hope, whether there is hope, God will give you a solution. Did you hear me? So, in this program today, tomorrow, that problem must be over. If you look at your Bible, the Bible said in the book of Isaiah 44, verse 24, and I read Isaiah 44 and verse 24, and it reads, take note, 44 and verse 24, Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that performeth all things. That stretcheth for the heavens alone, and that spread them abroad the earth by myself. In this program today, honestly, God will perform. The zeal of the law will bring that matter, that impossibility to become possible in your life in Jesus' name. Take note, I am the Lord that performeth all things. He see you spiritually, physically, materially, financially, academically. God will see you through. Yeah. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, I read verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 12. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his, his house. Now look at stanza 2. When I begin, I will also make an end. You see here today. As God has brought to him, as God has, you know, thrown this program to bless you, to heal you, to do that which no man can do. And today you are here. The Lord is saying, when I begin, when I begin, you see, in this program today, tomorrow, God will finish the work. You will make an end. That problem shall be no more. You are going on with testimonies in Jesus' name. And so, in this message, I'm going to consider the flowing subheadings. One, the reasons. An unfortunate situation. Take note. The reasons and the unfortunate situation. Two, I expect a response and the benefit. Let's go to that point one. The reasons and unfortunate situation. Everyone should realize that in this program, there is nothing God cannot do. He is the creator of all things. Is there anything too hard for him to do? In the book of Psalm 121, I read verse 1. It says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. 
From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. I want to let you know, the creator, the maker of heaven and earth, is there anything too hard for him to do? The psalmist said, I will look up unto that he. I will look up unto heaven. From whence cometh my help? And he said, my help cometh from the Lord, from the Lord which made heaven and earth. If God has made heaven and earth, tell me, what is that problem that God has no remedy or solution for? Any problem? If you look at Psalm 24 verse 1, it says the eight is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. He is the owner of all things. And so, no matter your problem, God will give you a solution. I say remedy is coming your way. Don't forget, everything today is existing by whose power? God. And he is the source of power. And he gives power to all things. He's the giver of power. He's the one by, his, by whose power everything exists. Remember, in Psalm 62 verse 11, he said, God has spoken once. To wise have I had this, that power belonging to God. He owns the power. And because the owner of the power, I'm assuring you, by that power today, no matter the problem you brought here, it will never survive today. Not only that he owns power, he gives power. He gives power, he gives strength to the people. And today, God will give us power to survive, to overcome, power to obtain all things from him. If you look at the book of let's take Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. Let's see. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. And I read, He giveth power to the faint. He will give you power. Amen. And today, that have no might, he increases strength. He see today, God will give you power. God will give you strength. And by his power, I'm assuring you, you will overcome. And by that power upon my life today, I'm assuring you as I speak, as I pray for you, you will receive your blessings in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and of all the power of the enemy and nothing about any means hurt you. He see you. You are going home with power. And I am standing here also by that power. And by that power today, my declaration shall come to pass. My prayer shall come to pass. The blessings as I bless you, God will bring it to pass. So, don't forget, God is in total control of the universe. He is God. He has no rivalry. He has no equal. What he cannot do, as I told you, exist. His dominion is from everlasting to everlasting. He ruled over all. In the book of Daniel, chapter 4, verse 3, I read Daniel, chapter 4, reading verse 3. Look at your Bible. Daniel, chapter 4, and from verse 3. And it reads, chapter 4, verse 3. Daniel, how great are his signs and his might and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. God has dominion over all and his dominion is from everlasting to everlasting and so the assurance i'm giving to you that what god has determined in this program he must bring it to pass you will never go with that problem if you look at the book of daniel chapter 7 daniel chapter 7 and then read from verse 13 he says i saw in the ninth vision and behold, one like the Son of Man came with a cloud of heaven and came to the ancient of days 
and they brought him near before him and there was giving him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion we shall not pass away and his kingdom that we shall not be destroyed i'm assuring you he is in charge of the universe his dominion is from everlasting and can never and kingdom can never be destroyed therefore as many of you who have come to dwell under the feet of the lord i'm assuring you god almighty whatsoever be your need expectation your problem he has power over all he will do it for you he will deliver you don't forget that he ruled by his power over all and as a result nothing can oppose him if you look at psalm 62 verse 7, 66 verse 7 and i read psalm 66 verse 7 psalm chapter 66 reading verse 7 and it reads verse 7 he ruled by his power forever his eyes behold the nations let not the rebellious exalt themselves so the point is what he ruled by his power and his power is over all and above all i want to let you know he can do and undo he has no limitation are you hearing me i told you what he cannot do it does not exist that thing which he cannot do he scriptures take note can never do what he cannot do let me find out from you what god cannot do can any man do it and so, can any this please do it so i want to be rest assured that he is above all and he can do all things in isaiah chapter 43 isaiah chapter 43 i read from verse 10 isaiah chapter 43 from verse 10 43 reading verse 10 and it reads isaiah chapter 43 from verse 10 look at the bible ye are my witnesses says the lord and my servant whom i have chosen that ye may know and believe me and understand that i am he before me there was no god formed neither that neither shall there be after me i even i am the lord and beside me there is no savior I have declared and have saved and have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is no can deliver out of my hand. I will walk, and who shall let it? Any spirit, any being, any human being. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10, I read, he said, I will walk, and who shall let it? Look at verse 10. Isaiah 46, verse 10. I read, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a rebellious bed from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yeah i have spoken it i will also bring it to pass i'll propose it i will also do it i want you to take note what god has determined whatsoever that god has promised he will do it no power no man no spirit that can hinder him and i'm assuring you 
in this program, all declaration concerning you will surely come to pass. Because as I stand here by the Spirit of God and speak concerning that problem you brought here, that problem must be uprooted. It must make like a was. God will confirm every statement to his own glory in Jesus' name. In Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37, I've told you, the creatures of God, they can never do above him. Therefore, if there is anyone threatening you, fighting you, opposing you, and the world, and some woman being are saying, well, there's no point of going to God. They will do this for you to do that for you. My friend, forget about that. All I'm assuring you, or someone saying, I will kill you, I'll destroy you, my friend, listening to me. If God be for you, who can be against you? And whatever they said, if God is not backing it up, can it work? I, I'm asking a question. Because to some people, they say, my uncle said this. They say that native doctor said this. They say that killer said this. They say that wicked woman, which is a wizard, that awkward person, is saying this. He will kill them. He will destroy them. My friend, that is a lie. Are you hearing me? I don't know who is bragging, making noise, and speaking as if though that he has the final say. That person, as long as he's not a child of God, whatever he's saying is a lie. It can never come to pass. If you look at the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 37, who is it that said it and it come to pass? When the Lord commanded it not. Don't be afraid anymore. That doctor said that your sickness is till dead is a lie. They say 50-50, it is what? And that witch is or wizard or that awkward person said, as long as he or she is alive, that they can't see you make progress, my friend, that is what? A lie. is complete lies. And as long as a lie, I'm assuring you in this program today, their statements have been evoked. Or whatever they've done against you and your family shall be cancelled. No matter how many years you have been in that problem, in this program, you have honored the invitation. God will serve you. If you believe it, say amen. amen. There is nothing our God and the God that I serve, the God of the chosen, there is nothing he cannot do. Anything. Please remind me. Anything. In Luke chapter 1, verse 37, Luke chapter 1, and verse 37, look at your Bible. Luke chapter 1, reading verse 37, and I read Luke chapter 1, and verse 37, and it reads chapter 1, verse 37, for with God, Nothing shall be impossible. He see you today. Whatever you are passing through, as long as you are in this program, we are the God of choosing as elected to make you to know that he has power to do all things, to do and undo. In this program, you are going home with a miracle. You are going home with your blessings. If you look at the book of First Samuel again, chapter 2, I read from verse 6 again. First Samuel, I will read that place on and on because of the import of the rule in this message. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. And I read, look at your Bible. It says, from verse 6, The Lord kill it and make it alive. He bring it down to the grave and bring it up. The Lord make it poor and make it rich. He bring it low and lift it up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lift up the beggar from the dunghill to send them among princes 
and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon it. I want to let you know, take note, one thing that is very certain is that God has power to do this or that. In this program today, to as many of you that you have been threatened by the enemy, God will kill them and make you alive. As many of you that are poor, listening to me, in this program, God will destroy the poverty. He will make you rich. Everything working against that kept you low, God will destroy those things. He will bring you up. No matter how poor, how managing, I'm assuring you as I pray for you, God will see you through. I don't know what you are passing through. You are God, my God, the God of choosing has power to do and undo. We rest assured that after this program today, you shall be lifted up. You shall be delivered. You shall be blessed. That which is your heart desire, God will give it to you. You see, some people sometimes, they say, well, God cannot do this. My friend, forget about that. If you look at that, that young man that gave testimony today, that young man and their mother, he said he cannot sit down, cannot use the body, cannot stand up. After coming to this place, you can see him standing. You can see him talking. You can even see that he's in the school. Am I right? And now somebody also told us, as we had from moderator, he was not talking, he was embarrassed, was not using the body. On Sunday, he was the one giving testimony. He said, now I can walk, I can speak, I can see, I can do all things now. An embassy that cannot use the body to do anything. Coming to choosing, that was the end. Now, he see you today. Look at her sister, just last year. He had lost hope of marriage. He was just expecting, but have no, just trusting that one day. It's like, let God do it. But the parents, the family, and everybody's giving up hope. But after that program, three days, after that program, three days, and the young man that was, that connected to him said, it was three days ago, he discovered the people, discovered that he began to have urge and say, call her, call her. That means immediately the word of knowledge. The Spirit of God connected her. Connected that young man. I began to look for her, for her. And within that three days, that was all. He see you. Honestly, your matter must be settled in this program. Whether your enemy like it or not, there are many people outside there. Sometimes, they say they hated choosing. Am I right? But do you know that the people that need choosing the most, that why they hated choosing is because the spirit that is holding them and dealing with them does not want them to be free. Look at the young man I gave testimony today. He said he hated choosing with passion. But was he not in choosing? He was saved. He was delivered. He hid. I'm asking you a question. Now, we have how many testimonies like that today? The point I want to let you know, tell everybody, choosing has solution. God or choosing has solution for all their problems. He's the only one that can do and not do. For instance, if these women that gave testimony of the having their beloved one healed or deaf and dumb, if they did not come to choosing, having been persuaded, even tra transport money paid by those people, if they did not, they will remain with their children having deaf and dumb growing and be old with death are done. But today, one touch is see you today. I know something will happen. I don't know about you. Are you hearing me? I told you your God is in perfect control. He can do and undo. What he cannot does not exist. He is able to do all things. But the unfortunate situation today is that many have limited God to ordinary man. And some people 
are even going ahead to even see human beings above God. God forbid. If that is your situation, that is unfortunate situation, something must be done. Human being, in all their expertise, in with all their wisdom, they have their limitations. They cannot be compared with the incomparable and almighty God. Human beings are too small for God. And so, I don't know whom you are seeing above God. The doctor, the rich man, and that person that says he possesses one power or the other, and he's not from God. Forget that person. Are you hearing me? Somebody here, a prophecy was given, and somebody began to doubt God. God says something. By the mouth of the prophet, in Second Kings chapter 7, open your Bible, let's read. Second Kings chapter 7. I read from verse 1. Please open your Bible. Second Kings. There was a man that doubted God. I pray you will never be like that man. Second Kings chapter 7, verse 1. And Elisha said, Hear ye me. The word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned and said the man of God and said behold if the Lord would make heaven make windows in heaven might this thing be doubt and the prophet said what and said behold thou shalt see it with thy eyes but shall not eat thereof he doubted the prophet. He said, if God would make windows in heaven, will he what you are saying to me that tomorrow that, uh, you know, two body will check for, so, so for a check it. He said, even if God make windows in heaven, he said, can these things be? And the prophet replied to him, you will see it tomorrow, but you will not live to see it. You will not live to enjoy it. And when it happened the next day, when the people are just, you know, scrambling for food, they march him to death. And he couldn't eat from me because he doubted the man of God. Please listen to me. Don't doubt God. He has power to do and undo. No matter how your economy may be, no matter how poor you are, God may decide, even in this program, to make you to be a rich person tomorrow. Somebody will say, how can? He said, is tomorrow not Sunday? Can it be possible? That is God for you. No matter how many years you are barren, God might decide that today that will not escape you after I will say amen. If you go to test, you find that the child is your boom. Are you hearing me? No matter the disease you are carrying, you are carrying everywhere and nowhere. As I stand here to say today, that disease is cancelled. It can never survive it in Jesus' name. So, the man that doubted the man of God ended up in death. I pray it shall never be your portion. And so, as a result of limiting God, some have ended up with native doctors or court teasing and struggling in vain without the true God. Struggling. Living their life in sorrow, miserable life. Do you know if you look around in you know this end time, you find that in this part of the world, many people are going into a taste, and many people are going into you know into some things that you need to pity them. They go, they say they go back to tradition. Can you imagine? It's a sorry state. And they have abused God and speak against God and mock God. It, it, this is a sorry state. If your brother or your sister or your friend has gone to that level, my friend, keep a distance because he's going to pay for it. Are you hearing me? Nobody has ever dared God and survived. It's just a question of time. He might just say some things and people are clapping for him, but look at, wait and see. 
some of them are going through tradition. They say into traditional religion, the tradition is, my friend, those people are people that are waiting for the wrath of God, anger of God, and it will fall upon them, except they repent. Are you hearing me? All I want to let you know, nobody has God. God is almighty, is all powerful. I'm assuring you, if there is anybody that is standing on your way and bragging with that evil thing, my friend, that person is a dead person. <laughs> Except he or she repents. So, I want to let you know, nobody can limit God. If you limit God and go to physicians and go to those personality and bragging with them, you have finished person. Look at what happened to this king. In 2 Kings chapter 16, I read 2 Kings chapter 16 and from verse 7. Look at your Bible. 2 Kings chapter 16, reading from verse 7. And it reads, so at 2 Kings chapter 16. From verse 7. So I have sent messengers to Tiglath Pilisar, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant. Please take note. I am thy servant. Please let's take Second Chronicle, not Second Kings. Second Chronicle chapter 16. I read from verse 7. Second Chronicles 16 verse 7. And at that time, Hanani the, the seer came to Esa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. We are not the Topians and the Lubins, a hoes with very many chariots and horsemen. Yet, because thou didst rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hands. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Hearing thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. Then Esa was wrought with the seer and put him in the prison house, for he was in a rage with him because of this thing. And Esa oppressed some of the people. The same time. What happened to this king? This king. This king relied upon God at the early stage of his kingship. And uh, when the Ethiopians and Lubins came, God gave him grace, victory over them. God helped him to defeat those people. And but at a point and when the king was growing thick and becoming proud, before you know it, another, I know, an army came up. And then armies of Assyria. Instead of this king relying upon God, he still began to consult other kings and left God. He began to consult other kings to help him to fight. And as he was doing that, a prophet was sent to him. I was warned that God helped you before. And now you have left God and I trust not upon human beings. And he says, because of that which you have done, those enemy, you cannot be able to defeat them. And as he was warned, instead of repentance, for relying upon human beings, as he was one rebuke because of God's love, he was in a rage and hold the prophet and put him in prison instead of repentance and oppress the people of God instead of repentance. Now let's see what happened to him in verse 11. And behold, the ass of Esa, first and last, look, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. While he was doing that, he was writing his last chapter. If you look at verse 12, and Esau in the 30 
and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet. God made him to be diseased. God afflicted him with disease. Let's find out. The reason for that was whether he can look for look unto God. Look for God. That's why God afflicted him. But look at what happened. And if you look at that place, until his disease was exceeding great, yet in his disease he sought not to the Lord, but to the he was God afflicted so he can call upon God. And in that sickness, he refused to look for God. He was looking for doctors. He was looking for those who will treat him. For human beings. For doctors. Why God allowed that thing to come upon him for him to repent? Are you like that? God has allowed something to happen to you that you might repent. And you are still running to human beings and running to evil spirits. But look at what happened there in verse 13. Verse 13. And Esther slept with his fathers. And what happened? And died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. He died. Nobody that forsake God and whom the Lord is warning to repent. And if you still repent, I shall leave. That person will die. No matter um, the kingdom or uh, human being or power, whatever is running to, God will kill that person. And I want to let you know that is the case of so many people in this present time. A lot of calamity is happening in this world now. And so many people, instead of running to God, they are running to traditional religion. They are running to tradition. They are running to, you know, to the, to the money, to the things of this world. They are running to the world. Occultism. They are looking for war. Destruction. And it's coming very soon. Except they repent. So, take note. Yet, this man died without solution. That's how many people who are into such things die without solution, without the remedy, because they have forsaken the Lord and limited him. Who cannot be limited? They die. There was the king of Israel, Saul. Saul went to the woman of Endor to, for divination, and God was angry. And as a result of that, God al allowed that man that refused to call upon him, God allowed him to die and lost his kinship and lost everything. And the Bible has this record concerning him in 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 verse 6, that 1 verse 6, I read 1 Samuel 31 and verse 6, and it reads 1 Samuel chapter 30, 1 verse 6, Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that sent there together, they perished because he refused to look unto God. He, he refused to return to God. And he saw the woman of Endor. And God killed him. He died. So do not forget that God has power to do this or that. He has power to kill. He has power to do what? To make a life. If you will run to him in repentance and amend your ways, honestly, God will save you. God will bless you. If you rely on him, God will see you through. If you turn your back from him, that's danger. I pray it shall never be your portion. That is the unfortunate situation that many people have been into, turning back from God and going to non essence and going to demons that God created. So, that takes to point number two, our expected response and benefit. Our expected response and benefits. Everyone should know that God has no equal. God has no rivalry. He has no alternative. There is no other alternative beside God. And no devil, demon, or man, or no matter the power, their power or greatness can challenge God and survive. They are all limited. They have no final say. In fact, God has the final say. 
May I remind you, I say God has no rivalry. If you look at Isaiah chapter 46, verse 5, Isaiah chapter 46, I read verse 5, and it reads, Isaiah chapter 46, verse 5, and I read, To whom will you like me, or make me equal, and compare me, that we may be like? I want to tell you, no one, God cannot be compared with any being. God is the Almighty. He has no equal. He has no comparison. Any person trying to dare him, that person is looking for destruction. Pharaoh tried it. What happened to Pharaoh? He died. If any man were turn their back from God, that person is dying. He cannot survive it. And so, I don't know what you are going through. All those people that people are running to has no final say. I've told you, I'm telling you again. God is the Almighty. God is the Alpha and Omega. God is the all-powerful God. My Bible tells me, he only, according to Isaac for 3, verse 13, said, he will walk and hold that shall let it. Who? And in Isaac for 3, verse 10, he said, his counsel shall stand. Whatever he says, whatever, in fact, he has the final say. No matter who is against you, or your family, or the spirit or kingdom against you, or your life, or your family, I want to let you know that spirit cannot survive today. That person that is against you, if he refused to remove the, his hand or a hand from your family from you, there will be trouble. Are you hearing me? I want you to understand that today God has determined to give you victory. Yeah. Nothing can oppose him. Yeah. I said he has power to do this or that. Therefore, I want to let you know, no matter who may be, they may be, God is equal to the task. Let them stand up. Let them arise. Don't be afraid. If God be for you, who can be against you? Are you hearing that sickness or disease? Ah, you will not survive. That's a lie. In this place today, just one word, you are healed. That is the end of that sickness. Are you hearing me? I want to let you know, don't be afraid. What you need to do, trust this God. Depend on him. Rely on him. I'm assuring you, he will definitely see you through. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 29, I read Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 29. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 29 and it reads Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in Egypt, before your eyes. He see you. God will fight for you. God will fight for your family. God will give you victory. In Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 3. Chapter 9, reading verse 3. Deuteronomy. And I read chapter 9, verse 3. Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is still which goeth over before thee as a consuming fire. He shall destroy them. He shall bring them down before thy face. So shall thou drive them out and destroy them quickly as the Lord has said unto thee. Honestly, God will destroy that enemy. Whatsoever that is daring God in your life, God will crush them. He will give you victory. Whatever they said to be impossible by doctors, by human beings, and they have given up hope. Say, you will not conceive, you will not be healed, you will not be delivered. And, you know, they're telling you, 
you know, just begin to plan how to die. My friend, I can sow that for you. A woman was, you know, having cancer in the loot. And they told that woman, prepared, there's no chances. You will not survive. Just, you know, told the husband, take the money, go and begin to prepare for her burial, for burial ceremony. And the woman happened to receive, somebody came to the hospital and gave them her, our magazine. And he, and he showed the husband, said, take me to that church. So long there's no chances. Take me to that church. And when they brought her to choosing, as they came in, the husband looked at the pulpit and saw that the moderator is a colleague in the same bank. And then after the service, he met him and said, look at the gaze of the wife. He has cancer. And the colleague, as the moderator said, okay, I'll take you to my pastor. And when he brought this person to the office, the woman, there was no life again in the woman. The woman was like an empty, empty palm. It was like a breeze. As soon as I stretched hand and touched on the head, the woman just stumbled and fell down. She didn't walk out of the office. They carried her out of the office. And then, first day, second day, she got up and became free. Hold on. Hold on. First day, no life. It was down, completely down. Second day, it was still down. But the second day when he got up, they opened her body and saw operation was carried out from beginning to end and stitched. And stitched. But there was nobody did it. They saw Mark. Mark was there. That was how she came back to life. No more cancer. What I'm telling you today, the moderator is the same one that moderated today is the colleague in the bank. Is the same one, the moderator. Is the colleague, the one that brought them to me. I said there was operation carried out. There was stitches, but nobody did it. But the God whom I serve, is seeing you today. As I make a declaration concerning you, you will fulfill your years. As I, make, as I make declaration concerning you, you will cross the limit. Suddenly, what you are not qualified, the God whom I serve will qualify you. He see you. After this program, those that knew you before, will ask you a question. Where did you go? I don't know. Whatever the enemy or doctors, whatever they have said, and giving up hope. I don't know the giant like Goliath. Today, I'm assuring you that David will kill that Goliath. Do you believe it? That Goliath, that giant you are alive. That Goliath must not survive anymore. Victory has come. Solution has come. Today, the powerful God, the one that have no rivalry, that have no equal, he will give you solution. He will give you full and final victory in Jesus' name. Remember, when the devil thought that he has done his worst by crucifying Jesus at the cross of Calvary, he did not know that he is helping God to fulfill the salvation of the whole world. If Jesus did not die, the whole world would have lost. But God allowed the devil, who is a bondman of wickedness, to crucify Jesus so that the whole world might be free. I want to let you know whatever the problem the enemy has put in your life is to the glory of God. 
to draw you to God, to hear and bring glory to God. And so get ready. Jesus, when he was killed and shed his blood, buried, thought there, he rose again for our justification. And I want to let you know salvation came through that justification came through that single death and healing and sorrow was carried away through that activity of the devil and across our Calvary. All I want to let you know today, every adverse work of the devil in your life must turn to glory. Must turn to testimony. If you believe it, say amen. He has power to do this or that. Whatever they say to be impossible, remember God has that power. I say he has that power to do that, this or that impossibility in our lives in Jesus' name. In Psalm 50 verse 15, he said, call upon me in the door of trouble. What happened? Don't call the, that man. Don't give up hope. He said, call upon me in the door of trouble. I call it to Psalm 50 verse 15. He said, I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. In Jeremiah chapter 32, I read verse 27. What is that problem? He said, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything to hard for me? Anything? You see, whatever you came expecting and trusting God in this program today, tomorrow, as I make the final declaration tomorrow, every yoke will break. Every kingdom holding what belongs to you, they will reform it. Is. And everything you are looking for by the years, and it appears appear there is no way. I'm assuring you, the angels will go on assignment. They will bring it to pass your life in Jesus' name. Are you getting ready? No matter the situation, they say they pronounce you dead. God has power to raise the dead. If you believe it, say amen. And I want to let you know he has done it many times in the Lord choosing. Are you hearing me? Any dead God did not permit in your life, your family, that person must come back to life. If you believe it, say amen. In Matthew chapter 11, let's see from verse 4. Matthew chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 4. And it reads chapter 11 from verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which you do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. I want to let you know, my brothers and sisters who are here, one thing that is very certain is God has power. To do all things. All these things that they are I know aligned by what Jesus has done and what Jesus is doing through his servants. I want to let you know he has not changed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So today God has power to do miracle of your choice. Are you hearing me? I don't know. What is that which you are expecting God to do? God has power to do it. What is it? You want to be healed? You want to be delivered? You want to have husband or wife or children? You want to, you know, you want to, you know, a, a kind of a, a cross over that hurdle, that battle? What is it? What is that thing that you want God to do? I'm assuring you, God is equal to the task. He will surely do it for you. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, I read verse 6. Take note now. The Lord kill it. He will kill your enemy. He will kill your problem. And make it alive. He will make it alive. He bring it down. All your enemy, all the problem, he will bring them down to the grave. And you, he will bring you up in Jesus' name. The Lord make it poor. Anything troubling you, God will weaken them. 
to make them people and make it rich. He see you. The program, God will make you rich. He will make every choosing rich in Jesus' name. And he said, he bring them low. All that are troubling you, he will bring them down. And lift it up. He see you, you are going up. I say you are going up. Look at verse 8. He raises up the poor out of the dust. He will raise you up and lift it up the beggar from the dumb head to set them among princes. He see you. God will lift you up that you might hear the throne of glory in Jesus' name. So get ready. You shall go home from this program a blessed person, totally free victorious in every area in jesus name are you getting ready i don't know what you came expecting as i'm going to pray you just say amen as i make mention of your case and as i pray for you concerning any matter my friend count it down for god whom i serve he has the final say Whatever God says through your pastor concerning you, count it down. What did I say? Now, because of the time, I want to rush now and conclude. But wait for the last prayer. Don't go away. As I made the last prayer, please say amen to it. That problem shall be no more. So, as I round up now, those who are not yet born again, and those who are backsliders, they were once born again, but I come back to the world. You should acknowledge your sin, your state, and say, I am sorry. You confess that sin, you renounce it, and promise God no more. You believe that Jesus died for you shed his precious blood for you and was buried and on the third day he rose again for your justification believe it and reject the devil renounce his works and invite jesus into your heart to be a lord your personal savior the power of sonship shall be given to you and as you go on to live righteous life i'm assuring you god shall be with you remember once you are born again endeavor endeavor to maintain what righteousness because a christian is not a sinner and a sinner is not a christian my bible said in first john chapter 3 verse 8 please look at your bible let's read first john chapter 3 i read from verse 8 he said he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested and he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, whosoever is born of God, doth not commit sin, for he still remained him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Verse 8 says, a sinner is not a Christian. Verse 9 says, a Christian is not a sinner. And what is sin? Now, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 17, he said, all unrighteousness is sin anything that is not righteousness in first corinthians chapter 6 first corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 look at your bible first corinthians chapter 6 i read verse 9 know ye not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of god be not deceived neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of the self with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor rebellious nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god all those people who are into all these things the bible says they shall not inherit the kingdom of god unbelief unforgiveness anger hatred pride lying selfishness greed love of money love of the world covetousness insincerity unfaithfulness backbiting these are terrible sin murmuring causing people swearing with heaven and eight watchmen i do making i do have an idea in your heart these are terrible sins and going for divination going to native doctors to make sure that is sin and consulting the dead these are terrible sin. confess them and promise god no more and if you're among those people that belong to secret court 
Marine Court, Witchcraft Court, Local International Court, any kind of court is in campus court. Whether black court or white court, renounce them and promise God no more. All court is in, is from the product of the devil. I mean, you are ways. Gather their property and burn them. I mean, they are ways. Are you into stealing? Are you into picking pockets? Are you into breaking home and entry? Burglary? Are you among those people that are stealing where you are working? Are you into, you know, into um, robbery? Into Yahoo, Yahoo, uh, fraud? Uh, you know, do, 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 for one night, repent and promise God no more. I mean, you are ways. The unrighteous shall not be healed in the kingdom of God. I don't know evil. All those that are involved into masturbation, um, no, uh, fornication, adultery, homosexual, lesbianism, all these are terrible sins. Those into prostitution, you say your body for money. That is sin. Or you are among those that patronize the prostitute. Or maybe you are those that prostitute their children to make money. That is sin. Or you are a seducer. A Christian is not a seducer. A seducer is not a Christian. Or maybe you are into abortion, or you ate abortion, or you said the drug. That is sin. You kill a bomb baby. Repent and promise God because no murderer has inheritance in the kingdom of God. All these people that are into uh, ritual killing, and kidnapping and killing, mandatory and killing for any reason. They shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Instead, they repent and stop it and do it no more and cry to God for mercy. I mean, you are ways. I don't know if you are into the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All those people are into, you know, give bribe and take bribe and stop money from people because of uniform, because of position. That is sin. Those are into fighting and quarreling.